Hello, hello, hello. It's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I am so, so, so excited that you are joining me. I have some fun cards to share with you today. And Stampin' Up! is in the middle of their Black Friday sale. This sale has been incredible. And don't worry because it's not over yet. You have one more day. This sale ends on Friday, November 18th, 2022. That's tomorrow. So you've got some time still. Look at everything that's on sale. This is from the annual catalog. You can get 10% off all pounds. 15% off all stamp sets, 20% off all dies, 20% off the embossing folders, and 20% off designer paper. Holy smokes! It's amazing! Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you have already placed an order during this seasonal sale. I'm not going to lie, I've placed more than one. <laughs> Oh, I keep finding things that I think, oh, I need to stock up. Oh, I meant to get that designer paper. So I have placed multiple orders and I will probably place another one. The seasonal sale is on everything in the annual catalog. So the stuff in the mini catalog doesn't doesn't isn't part of this sale although i will tell you that stampin up has released the last chance list for the mini catalog they've let us know what items are going to be discontinued and there are some big discounts on the mini catalog stuff that starts december first watch for details i haven't posted it yet because we're getting through the seasonal sale first so right now make sure you're taking a look at that annual catalog getting any of the stamp sets dies designer paper that you've been thinking about we'll come back to the mini catalog later so tonight's projects are going to be focused on the mini catalog or the annual catalog rather and i'm going to show you some projects that will probably make you want to place an order. <laughs> and if you do, you can order in my online store, juliedavison.com slash shop. Use my host, my host code B4CEGKV7 to, um, to get my free project kit featuring fitting florets. So that is for November. I'll be sharing those projects soon. I'm thinking next, um, next week. I'm going to pre-film for Thanksgiving um, and share some fitting florets projects but tonight annual catalog I do have a Christmas project and some other fun things to share and guys I just posted this I've already had a bunch of people sign up I'm super excited this is the third year I have done 12 days of Christmas gift box and if you're not familiar it is so much fun I curate a gift box for you and individually wrap 12 different gifts that are all Stampin' Up! product all together. It is $100 in Stampin' Up! product. Plus, if you sign up by Thanksgiving, I will throw in a bonus gift from me. Each gift is wrapped and I will start my daily video series on December 5th. So every day I'll open a gift, reveal what it is, and create a project using that gift. You're going to love what I've picked out for this year's gift box. I'm super excited. I do get some questions all the time, so I just want to clarify the 12 days of Christmas um, gift box does not include Christmas products. Um, it is just 12 Christmas gifts. Um, and so there is there is one item I did pick out from the um, mini catalog, but it's not specifically for Christmas. Um, so don't worry. Like, I know sometimes you don't, you know, at that point you're going to be done with Christmas. So you're ready to move on. So these are all things that you're going to love um, and be able to use all year round, not just for Christmas. Um, so signups are going on right now for that. Uh, make sure to reserve your spot. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing Susan's comment about snow. Oh, what is that? Five inches? Did you say? Um, now that the comment is gone, I don't know what happened to it. Uh oh, it looks like I have a little <laughs> um I'm hopefully we'll be okay there was a message about recording while using multiple apps so hopefully we're okay here um yes it was so great to see you too Tony um what I'm scrolling back up to see Susan's comment about snow five inches yes five inches in Minnesota we have had some flurries here on, in central Illinois nothing really sticking um let me know is it snowing where you are um <laughs> I am enjoying the light flurries. I would not enjoy some accumulation. I, I'm good for a white Christmas, not a white Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh my goodness, it is too cold though. I'm not enjoying the colder weather. Um, all right, we're going to jump in. 
I feel like I've got a couple different directions I want to go. We're going to start in this direction. <laughs> um, one of the things I do with my team, we have so much fun. One of the things that we do every month is a mystery stamping um, stamp and share Zoom. So we get together on Zoom because my team is all across the country. We get together on Zoom and we stamp together each month. We start off the Zoom by doing introductions and sharing projects that we have made. So it's so much fun to do that little show and tell and see what everybody's been busy working on. And then we make a card together. And so this is is the mystery stamping layout that I did with my team um, this this week. We had our um, stamp and share on Tuesday. Um, and the fun thing is that everybody prepares their own materials at home. And then we make the card and then we get to see how different they all turned out. I love it so much. Sharon Armstrong started the mystery stamping. I think even before COVID, she was doing mystery stamping. Um, and it's just, it's so much fun. I, I love, <laughs> I love sort of having the direction, you know, and, and making a card that somebody else is directing, right? Because sometimes it feels like, um, did, did you ever just get stuck, right? Where you just want somebody to else make the decision. I get that way all the time about dinner. My husband took the day off today. And so we went out to lunch and he was giving me all these options about where we could go. And I was like, you know what? You just, you decide. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't decide. So mystery stamping for me is fun because I don't have to decide anything. Somebody else is telling me exactly where to put the pieces. Well, I really love this layout and I have some other samples um, to show you. So I think I think you're gonna like this layout too. And even though there's not a mystery because you're gonna see how I'm putting it together, I do think that you're gonna um, wanna try this layout once you see it. I'm starting with a piece of crumb cake cardstock. Um, and so this is just five and a half by eight and a half. And then I have some layered pieces. I have some designer paper that is one and three quarter inch by four and a half. And my embossed piece is three by three. Now on, uh, on the other cards and the measurement that I gave to my team was three inches by three and a quarter, but I don't think it matters that much. I cut this one down to three by three. Um, and then uh, we've got a piece that is coordinating. This is pear pizzazz is one and a half by four and a quarter. I'll put all these measurements for you in the video description. Um, for my instructions, I told everybody to have a die cut image or a label or a punch or something like that. So I have a punch out and let me show you what I'm using today. I really love these products. These are actually carryover from last year's mini catalog. There is the Christmas season stamp set. These are images, sort of watercolor Christmas foliage. And then we've got the Christmas to remember greeting set. And coordinating with both of them is the seasonal label dies. Now these have dies that die cut both the images and labels that die cut the sentiments in the Christmas to remember. Okay, so look at that. You get a lot of dies in this one. A lot of label dies. There are six different label dies and then some different, some different dies that are going to die cut um, die cut the, the stamped images. So these are all in the annual catalog, okay? We've got Christmas season, Christmas to remember, and the seasonal label dies. So all of these are on sale right now. The stamp sets are 15% off. The dies are 20% off. If you have been looking at some dies, now is a great time to stock up on it. If you're a demonstrator, you get 20% off the dies, and then your demonstrator discount on the sale price. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Okay, so I am using all three of those. And then the other thing I did ahead of time is I used some embossing folders to emboss the pine needles. This is the Wintry 3D embossing folder and it comes in pair. So you have some snowflakes and the Christmas pine and they're also on sale. You can get all embossing folders from the annual catalog for 20% off, okay? Here's the item number for this one. You can find it on page 177 of the annual catalog. That's where you're going to find all of the embossing folders in the annual catalog. So 155433 is the item number and it comes with both embossing folders. These are 3D embossing folders so you get a nice deep impression. And um, the embossing folders are the perfect size to fit in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love that. Did you know that there's embossing folders for the mini machine? There's a little icon 
um, in the in the catalog. Let me show you really quick. A little icon in the catalog that will show you which um, well it, the same thing is with the dies. So if they if the dies fit in the mini machine, it has a little mini logo, and then you also see that white logo on the embossing folder. So you can see those are the ones that fit in the mini machine and they're nice and small enough. I know, so great, right? Um, so here is in the catalog 44 and 45 is where we're gonna find the Christmas season and Christmas to remember. I just love these. Um, the designer paper that I'm using that coordinates with both, um, this is actually in the mini catalog. So it's not on sale yet. Um, I think it is part of the last chance sale coming up in December. So stay tuned for a discount. I'm pretty sure this paper is going to be discounted. It's called Painted Christmas, I think. And it's a 12 by 12 paper. So I have used a piece um, of the paper, this one. I just love the colors. This one really inspired my card. So I've got the Evening Evergreen Pine and the um, Pear Pizzazz in there. And then I think that's like pool party, soft succulents. I don't know. So pretty. Um, okay. So I did do some things ahead of time. I've got a piece for the inside cut. I've got a piece for us to stamp, um, one of the leaves and we're going to die cut. So we're just going to do some stamping and then put this card together. Um, so this one I'm going to stamp in here. I want to point out that that variation is normal. That is how this stamp set is meant to look. Um, sort of a watercolor look where it's not a solid complete. Oops, did I just get ink on? I did. Um, not a solid complete um, stamp image. I, I really like it. I think it makes it easier to um, stamp because if there is if it's not exactly perfect you won't notice it so we have a die that's going to die cut that and I'm going to use my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine oh my gosh okay I'm pretty sure I can talk about this I just can't show it to you um, <laughs> there is a really amazing promotion coming up in January during celebration when you join as a demonstrator in January or February 2023 you can get an extra $50 in your starter kits oh amazing and then on top of that you have the option to get the mini machine for only $30 more and there is a brand new mini machine that will be blue, boho blue. It's a sneak peek of a new in color. It is beautiful. So if you don't have a mini machine and you've been thinking about joining as a demonstrator, oh my goodness, it's going to be a really great time to do that. You don't have to get the mini machine. You can just get the regular starter kit and the extra $50 in your starter kit for the regular price. But if you want to, um, add on the mini mini machine it's actually like more than half off it's so amazing I'm having some trouble getting these in there we go I was just gonna say sometimes when I have trouble um, getting them in I actually just kind of stagger the plates and that usually works and then they go through just fine I have more problems I find when I when I am using new plates um, I don't know I guess the rough stuff plates that have a little bend to them just um, make it easier for the rollers to have something to grab onto. That's my theory anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so I've die cut my leaves. I'm going to put this back on the floor. Um, such a great opportunity. Like I said, if you don't have the mini machine, then um, it's going to be such a great deal. So Anne says, so sad we don't have um, Stampin' Up here in Sweden. Oh my gosh, that is so sad. But you know what? I'm very hopeful that someday it will happen. We just expanded in Europe um, and added a couple more countries to that market. So I'm I'm never say never. I, <laughs> I'm I'm holding out hope that it, Stampin' Up will come to you soon in Sweden. Um, okay, so where did our pieces go? Let's bring these back in. I think over here, um, and I don't want to lose my die, so I'm going to slide that back in so I don't lose it. Um, and I think I'm going to add some, I'm going to add a, a little, I'm just going to add a little leaf here in the corner. This is the inside piece. Um, and then I have some words. For the words, we're going to use Evening Evergreen. That's the darker green. And both of those are coming from the Christmas to Remember. So for the inside, we're going to do Merry Christmas. 
Oh, that's lovely. I really like the style of the words in this set. And for the front of the card, may this Christmas, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. Um, I was trying to decide which way this should be. And I think I'm going to go this way. Oh, I was really kind of worried that I wasn't going to stamp that and then I'd have to cut another tag, <laughs> but it's perfect. Okay, let's move our stamps over to the side here and let's get this card put together. So again, I've got crumb cake for the card base and I'm going to use some Stampin' Seal to glue this down to the inside. And then on the front of the card, we're going to start with that designer paper layer, and it's going to go over here. Now, on all of my cards that I did for the mystery stamping, I cut a banner tip um, on one end, but I'm going to leave this one straight because, honestly, I just love this designer paper pattern so much. I don't want to miss any little corner of it. <laughs> I'm going to take the embossed piece next and I'm going to overlap the banner piece or I guess just the designer paper piece in this case. I'm going to overlap it to the left side. So I kind of just have some even spacing going on here. And then my pear pizzazz piece, which um, coordinates with the designer paper, is going to go across the center of the embossed piece from one side of the card to the other, like that. We're going to bring in the tag with some Stampin' Dimensionals and our stamped and die cut words. I kind of feel like maybe we need another, um, another stamped image. Do you feel like, yes? Um, first of all, I'm trying to figure out what color this is. Maybe we can do one of those images in um, soft succulent is what makes sense to me. Let's see how that looks. Um, I'm going to get a block and we're going to stamp. It just needs a little something more, don't you think? Does that look like the right color or do we think it is Gosh, the other one that it would be would be pool party, but um, I think that is going to be too light. Let's do a this or that. Let's we'll compare here. It's really close, but I think we've got to go with the succulent, don't you think? Leave a comment and let me know, succulent or pool party. I'm going to die cut the succulent. <laughs> um, a little bit of an executive decision. Um, I love pool party and I love it for Christmas too, but I'm just not sure it's the right color for this one. Let's see, Janice says, with the mini, have you had any problems with the plates getting partway in and then not being able to advance, having to back out and try putting in the other side? You know what, personally, I haven't, Janice, but um, I, I have called in um, a replacement request for a customer that had some problems with her mini machine and it not working, and actually, I, I did have some problems with the bigger machine um, and Stampin' Up! was really great about replacing it. We tried to troubleshoot and um, it was just something that we couldn't get fixed. And so um, they're so good about um, taking care of us. I, I just love that they stand by their products. So if you ever have a problem, um, and Janice, if you are having problems, <laughs> um, then please let me know and, you know, we can... We can work it out and get it fixed for you. I feel like we need just one more. We always talk about threes. We're gonna do one more. <laughs> one more little foliage. And this is gonna be in the darker green, the evening evergreen. I'm reusing the same block here.
we got a lot going on in this card now, <laughs> but, but I think it'll be okay. And we haven't glued anything down. So, I mean, we haven't glued any of the elements down. Um, so we can always, we can always cut back if we think it's too much. Oh, sorry about that shaking. Usually I have something anchoring my, um, anchoring my stand down. Okay. I like that. What do you guys think of that? There's a lot going on, but I love the colors. I definitely think soft succulent was the way to go. And um, the only thing I think we need to add is some, I want to add some ribbon. Somewhere on my desk, I have some crinkled white seam binding. This is kind of hanging around. Although, you know, on this card, I would also really love some linen thread. Oh, I just love linen thread. So I'm going to just tie a crinkled white seam binding bow and we're going to stick that on there too. That's so pretty. We're covering up that beautiful texture. <laughs> I'll have to be strategic about how I'm placing things here. And we'll get this figured out. So we're going to add some of these elements with glue dots and then we'll add the label with the stamp and dimensionals and the the bow as well. I love though that we're bringing in some of the different colors from the designer paper because the paper is just so pretty. Okay, making a mess. Let's just throw things to the side. We'll clean it up later, <laughs> maybe. All right, do we need bling? I have been, um, I feel like I've been dressing up my cards a little more lately and I kind of wonder if we need if we need some some bling I don't want to go above where the card is. There. And these Stampin' Dimensionals. <laughs> yes to the bling. Oh my goodness. Do you ever say no to bling? Sometimes I do. We're going to add the um, the bow with a glue dot as well and kind of take up some of that room over there. Okay, what kind of bling? What kind of bling do we like for this? Let's get out my bling box. <laughs> An unofficial name. We have some seasonal sequins. That would be really pretty with the white sequins. We have some heart pearls. I used those earlier today. These are the elegant faceted gems. That might be nice with the clear. Oh, I think I kind of like that. Like a little bling without being too in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like just a little bit of... Because I love the texture. Oh, that didn't get the glue dot. I love the texture. Um, of adding embellishments. That's perfect. I didn't even give you a choice. I just went with it. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you agree with me. If not, you can always, yeah, I'm sure you guys have your own bling box at home, don't you? You can dress up your cards using whatever you have. Here's my finished card. Again, this is the layout, the mystery stamping layout I did with my team. Um, this week we had so much fun and I love that everybody shares their cards, um, in the group afterwards. Let me show you some of the other cards. So this card was inspired by a layout that I used a couple years ago. Do you recognize the elements? This was a paper pumpkin kit and I had it in my stash and I was like, oh, I just really love, I really love the layout. I just really love how all those elements are kind of brought together. 
And so for the mystery stamping, I used some brand new products. It's a sneak peek. This is the By the Bay Suite coming up in the new January through April mini catalog. Demonstrators will be able to pre-order this starting um, in December, on December 1st, and everybody else will be able to order starting in January on the 5th, I think. And then I also made a version with the gnomes. <laughs> I really love the way this turned out. I wasn't sure about all the blues and the whites. I was trying to have a little more contrasting color in there, but I used for the very first time, I finally used those iridescent stars. These are in the mini catalog and it's the adhesive backed stars. Do you have these? I haven't used them yet, but I added them to this card and I think they were just perfect. I'm going to move the blue over here to balance out the blue on this end, but isn't this layout so much fun? I know. I hope that you guys give it a try at home. I'm going to put those measurements in the video description for you so that you can um, pull out your own embossing folders, designer paper, cards, stock stamps and create your own cards. I hope that you'll share the cards that you make and Julie's Stamping Spot Share and Connect group right here on Facebook. Um, and I can't wait to see how you use this layout to make amazing cards. You guys are so, so creative and half the time I love yours even more than I love my own. <laughs> All right, so there was our first card. Again, we use the Christmas season stamp set, the Christmas to remember greeting set. Um, and the wintry embossing folders, all of those are on sale, including the seasonal label dies right now um, during the seasonal sale. And then we got a little on the inside, little stamping on the inside there. All right, are you ready for another project? We're going to stick with the annual catalog stuff because like I said, we've got this seasonal sale going on right now. Designer paper, stamp sets, dies, punches, and embossing folders are on sale until tomorrow, Friday, November 18th, 2022. You can get all these goodies in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. Okay, our next project is going to use the True Beauty Bundle. Actually, I don't think we're using the dies on this card. The True Beauty stamp set <laughs> and the Awash with Beauty designer paper. Oh my goodness, this paper is gorgeous. <laughs> it is a 12 by 12 designer paper with beautiful um, florals, beautiful colors. Um, and this is in the annual catalog, so it is part of the sale, okay? 12 by 12 paper, um, double-sided, so we've got just beautiful designs. Oh, look at that one! <laughs> if you're following me on Facebook, you may have seen this card that I shared. Um, I think that was yesterday that I shared it. I, I just fussy cut some flowers from this designer paper piece and then layered it onto um, a die cut. This die cut is part of the... Um, the die set. So we've got that big background die um, and then just some different layers of the designer paper. Oh my gosh, I know, just beautiful, beautiful. Um, and each each pattern is just even more, <laughs> even more gorgeous. This pattern in particular does coordinate with the dies. So you can die cut from the designer paper. I love it when they do that. The dies coordinate not only with the stamp images, but also with the designer paper. So you can die cut and mix and match and create your own cards. In fact, I think I have one. Um, oh, actually I did use stamp images on this card. I thought I used designer paper, which you absolutely could, but I did, um, I just used the stamp images to cut that. This background die is the picture this die set, also on sale. <laughs> um, Mom and I are featuring the Awash with Beauty Suite this Sunday. So make sure to tune in on Sunday, November 20th on YouTube for our Sunday stamping video at noon central time. We have a special celebratory issue issue episode. Um, and I, I'm not allowed to tell you <laughs> about this special surprise, but you definitely want to tune in this Sunday um, to see what's going on and um, to see the projects that we've made with this suite. One quick note, if you're looking at bundles in the annual catalog, right now during the seasonal sale, it's cheaper for you to buy 
the stamp set separately and the dies separately instead of buying the bundle. The bundle's not on sale, but it's cheaper to get the stamp set 15% off and the dies 20% off. Um, so if you're looking at bundles in the annual catalog right now, you'll want to buy them separately during the seasonal sale um, and you'll get a bigger discount that way. Okay, so I've got my pieces pre-cut for this project. I actually cut two different versions, but I think I like this version. I don't know. Let's do this or that. <laughs> you can tell me. I've cut some designer paper, and um, I've got I've got two versions. Um, this is one and two, pink or green. Um, I cut this one first, and then um, I was putting my designer paper away, and I was like oh, I love this. I just love the colors in this paper. And so this is actually the back side of that one. And so I did cut, and I know what you guys are going to say, make them both. <laughs> we could make them both. Although the color, the second color I was going to use here is different. Like this is Calypso Coral and this is Blushing Bride. Um, and so I don't know that making them both without cleaning my stamps is going to work very well. Um, okay, while you guys are voting, I see I, <laughs> making both is not an option tonight. We are going to choose one. Um, <laughs> um, one or two, pink or green. Okay, while that, while you guys are doing that, let me show you a couple more samples. Um, I went to On Stage in Indianapolis, which is Stampin' Up's um, annual conference, and I received my top performer gift for being a top performer in the company and they used the awash with beauty suite for the tags that they made so this was on the little bag that i received you are amazing beyond measure and this one was on the little pouch signed by sarah and shelly um and in the pouch are the little pins um, that I received for um, the categories in which I was the top performer. So this one is for being number 19 in the United States for personal sales. And this one is for being um, number 25 overall in the United States. So I was a top performer in both of those categories and received the pins along with a really amazing little carry-on bag and some goodies inside, including a warm wrap and some stickers. So much fun. Okay, so um, we are leaning towards green. I think most of you are saying green. Um, Nancy's the lone pink gal. I like, <laughs> um, I'll have to make up the pink and post uh, this or that on Facebook. So stay tuned. Uh, but we're going to do the green one tonight. And let me bring in my measurements and show you. So our card base here is, um, let's see, this is the card base. It's four and a quarter by eight and a quarter scored at five and a half. And then a second piece that is um, two and three quarters by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Okay, then we've got some um, pieces that are all the same size, two white ones and the designer paper that are two and a half by four inches. And I'm sorry, I didn't give you a, a sticky note. The large designer paper is four by five and a quarter. That's the big one. Okay, that's just like a standard card layer. Um, okay, so we've got our pieces. This is actually going to go on the bottom and fold up. And then we're going to add a designer paper layer here. This is kind of a double flap card. Um, and then we're going to layer the white pieces. So we're going to do some stamping. We're going to do some gluing. We'll probably add some bling and some ribbon. <laughs> Um, for this one, I get out the iridescent pearls, which are part of that suite, and I put some stamps on my blocks. We've got the rose and the leaves, just because, oh, actually, I think I was going to use You Are a True Friend, and um, and this other little flower, and this the ink pads are uh, Mary Merlot, Calypso Coral, and mossy meadow so let me get out my little grid paper and um, for the inside i'm just going to kind of stamp in the corner
let's see, I'm gonna do down here and the leaves. Oh, so pretty. Oh, I just love it. Um, all right, and then on the front, I'm going to stamp in opposite corners. Okay, and then I'm gonna stamp the leaves also kind of in opposite corners. And then I want to bring in a little more color with the Calypso Coral. And so I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add a little, a little flower like that. You know, I didn't think through this card. <laughs> I didn't try it out <laughs> um, before before we got started. Now I'm thinking I should just put the just because across here. Um, so maybe I will do that. Um, and I want to, oh, I don't know what color. Maybe the Calypso Coral. I was going to do a punch. Well, you guys can help me decide. Um, let's first try 5 eighths inch by three. I'm gonna go three and a half inches. We'll see, maybe we'll cut that across here. I think that's a good size. Okay, um, and then the other thing I was thinking is a punch, the um, Label Me Fancy punch. So I've got two different greetings. This one says just because, and that's going to go across. That's not very dark, is it? Let's try again. That's better. And the other one is you are a true friend. Oh, I had a little halo. Let's try again. A little crooked. Okay, so these are going to go on the smaller Mary Merlot card base. On the front, we've got this one. On the inside, this one. You're right, we do need to add a little a little bit of that Calypso Coral on the inside, don't we? So pretty. Okay. You're a true friend, I think just because. It fits in there just perfectly. And we can cut a little banner tip. So somewhere on my desk, buried. <laughs> I'm going to cut up the center and then from each corner to the top of that center cut. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Kay. I love to hear when you guys share. Like, I love knowing that you're inspired by what I'm sharing and like it enough to want your friends to see it too. Um, here's our banner. This is going to be on the front and we have some layers. Let's get these things glued down. Um, so we're starting with the, um, the main piece inside. I hate to cover this up because, because it is so pretty, but I also really love the green backgrounds. Then this is going to go on the front. This is at the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're putting that down the correct direction um and that you don't you know if you have it this way um then it'll be upside down so this is going to be folding up from the bottom and then we're going to add um our we're going to add our card um in the middle like this we need to add a little ribbon or something in here don't you think um and so we're going to glue this down and I, I debated on whether or not to use something like tear and tape. Don't hate me. I'm going at an angle. <laughs> Do you hate the angle? Is it okay? Um, well, I'm going to do it. If you hate the angle when, when you make this card at home, you can not, not put it on an angle. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a little bit of that, um, 
that seam binding again since I have it out. I love that it is so versatile. I think it can go with so many different things. We used it on the first card, which was a Christmas card. And now we're gonna use it here. And actually, I feel like maybe I made it too big. Let's, we, let's bring that in just a little bit. This is going to go behind the sentiment. And I'm going to use a little bit, this is my trick. I always use the tear and tape to hold the ribbon down. Okay, so this is going to go across the card. Like that. And the tear and tape is gonna kind of hold it down. And then the um, sentiment is going to cover that up with Stampin' Dimensionals. So we're gonna use some Stampin' Dimensionals underneath the sentiment, and that will cover up where we put the ribbon on. Here is our card. We've got one flap and then the second. Isn't this just gorgeous? Oh my goodness. And then I do want to add a little bling. We're going to get out some of the iridescent pearls and, um, and just add a few. Add a few of those. To the card. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, isn't it just beautiful? This is the Awash with Beauty. I'm kind of feeling like it's a little busy to have the stamped image on the designer paper, but we've got the layer in between. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. Here's one more where I die cut the designer paper and I did layer on a busy background too, but I think that there's enough white space in the middle that it balances it all out. Yay, I'm so glad you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up, give me a heart if you like this card. Um, this layout with the double flap is so fun to make. Um, and it's really pretty easy. So it's just kind of a, a unique way to dress up your card. Are you guys, are you guys dying with the, the crooked? Let's straighten it out. <laughs> I'm just going to peel it up really quick and, um, and we'll put it down straight. Whenever I have a double flap card like this, I, um, will just take and center it when it's open. Um, and then bring that flap back up and so then it works out to be where it's supposed to be i kind of just like it on the green don't you <laughs> um maybe i'll fuss around and tear it apart some more later on <laughs> all right two cards we've made so far oh using some designer paper and some amazing stamp sets that are on sale right now um during this seasonal sale I have one more project that I want to make tonight, and I'm not, I don't have this one kind of prepped and ready to go, but I bought this stamp set back when we had a stamp set sale. Do you guys remember that? It was a couple months ago we had a sale on stamps, and um, I bought this stamp set, Better Days. It honestly reminded me of my sister Amy. She loves stuff like this, and so I thought, I'm going to make Amy a card with this, and I haven't used it. I haven't inked it up at all and so um this email came through from stampin up um and it was um in succeed weekly if you're a demonstrator you get this weekly email and it has some inspiration succeed weekly always has um always has inspiring projects and some business tips and things like that and they have a feature where they case projects and this is i think from the catalog I'm trying to find which page it's on. Um, I think what they did is they took a project, this one, and they decided to copy and do the same thing with a different stamp set, okay? So um, this is the, oh, here it is. Oh my gosh, that was so lucky. Page 65, the Fresh Cut Flowers. So here's the inspiration project. And the technique here is the stained glass window. So they did embossing and then they colored with Stampin' Blends on the back. Yes, exactly, Melissa, stained glass. Um, and so 
this was the project that they shared that they copied um, using the Better Days. And I love it. I think it's so pretty. And so we're going to case this tonight. I love to case. You guys know I talk about it all the time. By the way, case stands for copy and share everything. Or I like to say copy and selectively edit. In this case, though, I'm making this card exactly as it's pictured because I think it's perfect as is. Um, we are going to use, I'm going to get out some Stampin' Blends. We're going to use um, the Starry Sky and the Orchid Oasis. Um it might actually just be light and dark Orchid Oasis, or maybe we'll do, oh, that's Night of Navy again. Um, we're gonna do light Orchid Oasis and light Starry Sky. Let's see, I think that is this one. And then we're gonna use some Fresh Freesia. And it looks like a light pink. So how about a dark petal pink? And then we need a yellow for the sky. So we're gonna go with a dark daffodil delight. Okay, these are the colors that we're gonna use today. I have a um, fresh freesia card base. We're gonna use fresh freesia to stamp the leaves all around the background. Then we're going to stamp and emboss the image with white embossing folder, and then we'll color the back. I guess you can color the front. In fact, this one does look like they have colored Nope, nope, you can tell they turned it over. <laughs> it looks like it's the front, but I can see the sun has flipped, so I can tell it's the back side. Um, all right, let's start with the background. We're going to stamp, um, I'm going to bring in my, um, my grid paper again, and we're going to stamp with Fresh Freesia ink on the Fresh Freesia cardstock. Uh-oh, where's my Freesia? It is not... <laughs> my ink pad oh I already got it out see I'm so silly it's it's on my desk right in front of me okay fresh freesia we're going to stamp and I'm just going to take and rotate this as I'm stamping it and I'm going off the edges I don't have to do the whole card because we're going to cover up the center so I am going to just focus on the outside and create um, a border with this little leaf. all the way around. I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't and I apologize. <laughs> um, there are three images that are fussy cut. This one doesn't have any coordinating dies. This is a standalone um, stamp set. And so we have three of these leaves where we're just going to do some quick cutting around the leaves and too bad I didn't do a magic of TV on this. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be too particular about it, especially at the bottom because the bottom is going to tuck behind. Um, it's going to tuck behind the, the greeting so it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh my goodness, sometimes there's awkward silence. <laughs> oh, tell me what you guys are planning to do this weekend. I'm driving across the state with Claire for a college visit and a big scholarship interview. So please say a prayer, keep your fingers crossed, send us good vibes. Um, she has the opportunity for a full tuition scholarship. Um, and so that's 
really exciting. We'll see how that goes. She's super nervous. <laughs> I would be too. I'm glad it's her, not me. Um, all right. I am trying to be quick about this. A vendor event. Exciting. I know exactly. The edges don't matter so much because it's going to go against white. So I'm trying to be... I'm trying to be quick about it, but hopefully I'm not sacrificing um, the card too much here. Okay, we'll see how that goes. I've got those fussy cuts. I'm not loving my cutting job, but you get the picture. Let's do the fun part. We're going to do the embossing next. So we're going to use some vellum cardstock. And this is layered then onto a piece of white cardstock. So we're going to have two that are the same size. And since I am casing or copying this card, I don't have exact measurements. So let's just kind of guess and see what we think. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do when I don't know. I just cut and I guess. So I'm guessing three and a quarter by four and a half. And actually, that looks pretty good. I feel like I have the same amount of border around the edges. I'm going to cut a piece of white that's the same size. Just reaching down into my scrap box. So that was four and a half by three and a quarter. right here so those are layered and they are a little off I know you can't see it very well in the picture but I kind of like that they are off a little bit all right we're going to stamp our background image and emboss in white so first thing we're going to use our embossing buddy to help get rid of any um, extra oil or um, ink or whatever that could be um, catching extra embossing powder. We're going to stamp in Versamark ink. I'm going to go right in the center. Oh my gosh, you know what? It's so hard to see because the white paper, that's white too, but I think I, oh no, I still can't see it very well. Hold on. Let's just grab a piece of colored cardstock so that we can see where we're stamping. That's better. Now I can see and go right in the middle. It is a clear ink, so you can't see it. <laughs> and we're going to add, um, let's see, I have my little tray. We're going to add white embossing powder. This is part of the basics embossing powder pack. Stampin' Up! embossing powder comes in um, assortments. So the basics powder includes white, black, and clear. And then there's a metallics assortment which includes copper, gold, and silver. All right, next up, we're going to use our heat tool to heat the powder and melt it. Actually, I'm going to use the lighter setting since we're embossing on vellum, which is a little more delicate. I'm going to use the lighter setting and heat. It's, it's kind of hard to see the white embossing powder. You can kind of see it get darker. As I move, if you're burning your fingers, we've got little tweezers, finger savers. Oh my gosh, there, can you see? As it is in, as it's turning um, bright white, as it's melting, so you can kind of see now that it's, it's warm. 
And I'm just gonna keep moving it around the, the cardstock until all of it is embossed. And we get that beautiful bright white. Looks like snow. And that's it, just until the powder's all melted, then you know that you can stop. And so it doesn't take very long to cool down. So we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna color the other side just like, um, just like the project over here. Okay, so we're gonna do the darker color on the bottom. And for this one, I'm using Light Starry Sky. I'm using the, br the brush tip of the um, of the Stampin' Blends marker to color on the back of the vellum. Okay, and then I'm going to do the light Orchid Oasis. Oops, I didn't really want to go over the line like that. I'm gonna get out my color lifter. That's the sort of clear one. I'm just gonna kind of rain that, <laughs> just rain that back in again. And then I've got the, which one is this? I'm using light fresh freesia. I'm gonna do the sun with daffodil and dark petal pink, which is really light. It's not a very dark color, but just adding a little bit, a little bit of color to the sky. Like a dusk, right? A dusk sky. Okay, so that was on the back. Then we're going to turn it over. And let me put it on the white and you can see. Um, all the lines kind of hide behind the embossed lines. So it doesn't have to be colored and perfect. Because the embossed lines are opaque and cover up um, anything that is looking messy because we didn't quite go right inside the lines there um i love that so then you can glue the um you can add the vellum to the cardstock and you want to be careful because you are going to be able to see um the adhesive through um through the vellum and so i'm going to be strategic about placing um glue dots underneath where the sentiment is going to be so that's going to be approximately here and I'm going to add another one. And then um, I'm also going to take some glue dots and kind of roll them. And um, I'm going to add them. I'm going to try here to um, add it to the frame at the top and have some anchor points at the top. And by rolling it and putting it underneath the frame, I think it will not be visible because the embossing will kind of, um, the embossing will kind of hide that. Okay, so our card is coming together. So, so pretty here. We're almost done. We just need to emboss our sentiment. I picked out a little piece of the Orchid Oasis and I'm going to cut um, I'm going to do a one inch piece and we're going to emboss with white. So I'm doing my embossing buddy. We have, here's the sentiment, wishing you better days. And this is going to go, I feel like that could even go a little, um, well, we'll cut it. I'm gonna kind of go close to the top 
and I'll cut the bottom off and make it a little skinnier. It's always easier to have it be bigger and make it smaller, <laughs> but if it's too small, then you're just SOL. <laughs> okay, out of luck. Um, all right, so I got the embossing powder on there. Next, we are going to use the heat tool again and heat that up. I love the way that the bright white words look on dark cardstock. I used the, um, the stronger setting, but also the heat tool was kind of already warm, so it didn't need to heat as long. All right, I'm going to give this a little trim with my paper trimmer, just trim that up a little bit so that it's a little less wide. And then with my scissors, I'm going to do a banner. So I'm gonna to cut to the ends off here. And we're gonna do a very wide banner. So I'm just gonna snip just a little bit and then take from the corner to the top edge Okay, so very, very wide banner. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Let's get that out of the way. Our card is coming together. <laughs> I'm going to use some glue dots to attach the um, our fussy cut leaves behind. Um, actually, I want to do the glue dot the other way. I'm going to go face down so I can glue it behind the banner. I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to take that off and I'll glue it to the back of the banner. Wishing you brighter days. Okay. We're going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals to put both the big piece down and the banner as well. And then we're going to add some of those same pearls, the pearlized, iridescent pearls, that's what they're called. This is going to go in the center. And the banner overlapping, and we just cased this card exactly as it appeared. And again, I found this idea in Stampin' Up's Succeed Weekly magazine for demonstrators. I love all the places we have to find inspiration and share with each other. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> this is lovely. Wishing you better days. Oh, that stained glass technique is just so pretty. I'm wondering if I should have used a little bit of a darker color here, like it's maybe the dark starry sky instead of the light one, but I still like the way it turned out. Oh, we made three cards tonight. I'm gonna review them and then I have some um, bonus projects to share with you. So don't, don't close your browser yet, keep it on. Tonight we made three cards. We ended with this one, the stained glass technique. We started with a Christmas card with a great layout, a little um, double flap card featuring a wash with beauty. And then we ended with the better days stained glass card. Just so pretty. I love it. We almost need a little ribbon on here, but I don't, no, I don't think so. I'm going to leave it off. <laughs> 
I hope you enjoyed the projects that I shared tonight and that you feel inspired to try these techniques or layouts at home. You guys ready for some bonus projects? I received some beautiful cards in the mail and a little project um, from Liz Orr stopped by to pick something up and she gave me this cutie. She was making some up for um, a, a vendor fair that she was participating in with a cute squirrel. Um, the nuts about squirrels, I think is the, the, what that one's called. And I love this, um, the old world paper texture embossing folder. Isn't that just cute? Little granola bar there. And, um, I, I just think it, it dresses it up so nicely. The granola bar of course has nuts and the squirrels like nuts. So I thought that was really clever. Thank you, Liz, for this treat and the cute packaging. I really do love it so much. It's too cute. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> um, next up, we've got some cards that I received in the mail. This one is from Jill Peterson. I love that with the bamboo. The bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that breaks. What a great proverb. Thank you so much um, for such a beautiful card. I love that. And this designer paper is um it's in the clearance rack what is this one called it's the um on the tip of my tongue everything eden the eden garden eden's garden <laughs> eden's garden designer paper has the beautiful greens in there oh my goodness look at this one this is from jill linden steel she said she saw this from lisa curcio um who created this multi-step card what does she call it here let's see um a couple weeks ago did she say what it is I don't I don't think she said what it's called but little little stair step card there holy macaroni that that is just so cool thank you Jill for this amazing card and for celebrating me I just love that so much lots of bling we're gonna keep going here some more congratulations cards this one's from Vicki Stuckymeyer I love this with the metallic and shimmer designer paper there's another one here I'll pull that one out using the same paper so beautiful this one's from Ruth Moore I love it I love it love it love it here's one that's got all the numbers on there one million this is from Donna Johnson and family I love so much that you all stamp together over zoom Donna Johnson Carol Rossman Diane Gorski Becca Fisher and Karen Schneider um, thank you so much for this amazing card it, it is just so special um, and again I just love that you guys all stamp together and can share this amazing hobby thank you for this card and for celebrating me some more amazing cards this one's from Melanie Lampert using the rustic harvest designer paper oh, I love these colors I love them Cajun craze Mary Merlot crushed curry and basic black little mossy meadow back there too this one is from Laura Burke using the fitting florets designer paper and the new um the new bundle with the oval frames these are so amazing i love them i miss seeing laura usually i get to see her on stage and um, i didn't get to see her this time so laura thank you so much for sending this card it really meant a lot um that you sent your greetings in the mail last card is from trina a little thanksgiving card she said inspired by the great big card swap i don't think that trina sent this one for the great big card swap. i think she saw it in the great big card swap um i just love this so much the leaf fall embossing folder and the background one is my favorite oh my gosh gorgeous cards i am so blessed um to receive so many amazing cards i know how it feels to get happy meal you know how it feels to get happy meal so send some happy meal this week um, and make others smile. Make them feel as special as I feel. Thank you so much for tuning in for Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I hope you enjoyed the cards I shared. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up or a heart if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. Especially, you're going to want to tune in on Sunday at noon central time for Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie, a very special episode featuring the Awash with Beauty Suite. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.